In this video, I am going to talk about the term structure of interest rate and the yield curve. The term structure is a collection of risk-free interest rates for different time horizons. For example, we have interest rates for 1 year, 2 years, 3 years, 10 years, and 30 years. The collection of these interest rates is called the term structure. A graphical representation of the term structure is called the yield curve. Let's assume that on the y-axis we have these interest rates associated with different maturities, and on the x-axis we have the time horizon. This graphical representation is what we call the yield curve. In the next slide, I'm going to show you an example of a yield curve at a specific point in time. But before that, there are a few things I want to discuss. First of all, the yield curve is typically upward sloping. When I say typically, I mean that most of the time, we expect the yield curve to slope upwards. This means we generally expect interest rates associated with longer-term maturities to be higher than short-term interest rates. If you're lending money to someone, and your money won't be accessible to you for, let's say, 10 years, you would want to be compensated for whatever might happen during those 10 years. For example, over the course of 10 years, there might be periods of high inflation, periods of low inflation, or other economic shocks. As an investor, the longer you lend your money, the more compensation you want. And this compensation typically comes in the form of higher interest rates. So in general, we expect longer-term interest rates to be above shorter-term interest rates, which is why the yield curve is usually upward sloping. Another important point about the yield curve is that the term structure of interest rates generally moves up or down for all maturities simultaneously. This means that if there is a sudden change in short-term interest rates, long-term interest rates are likely to be affected as well. In fact, for U.S. Treasury securities, 99% of the variance in returns at any maturity is related to shifts in the entire term structure. This is in sharp contrast to stocks, where the return of a specific stock largely depends on stock-specific news or fundamentals. Typically, only 10-20% to of stock movements are due to overall market movements. Additionally, there is a lot of empirical evidence that shows returns on long-term U.S. Treasury securities are more volatile than returns on short-term bonds. This is one of those empirical findings that isn't necessarily consistent with standard economic theories. If you think about it, Economic news about inflation and other macro variables should affect short-term interest rates more because they matter in the short run. If you're looking at interest rates over the next 10 years, inflation today, or even next quarter or next year, will have a limited effect on interest rates 10 years down the road. For that reason, we would expect short-term interest rates to be more volatile since they respond to short-term macroeconomic fundamentals. However, that's not what we see in the data. The data shows that returns on long-term U.S. Treasuries are far more volatile than returns on short-term bonds. Now this is the Treasury yield curve as of August 2020. As you can see, this is just a snapshot of the yield curve at a specific point in time. This curve could look different if you examine it at another time, such as next month, next year, or five years from now. It could be very different or, in some cases, quite similar. The point is that this is just a snapshot showing the interest rates for different maturities at that moment. On this graph on the far left, we have one month, then three months, one year, two years, three years, and all the way to the right, we have 30 years. The x-axis shows time to maturity or the time horizon, and the y-axis shows the interest rate corresponding to each time horizon. What we observe here is that short-term interest rates are much lower than long-term interest rates and the yield curve is upward sloping. One reason that investors pay attention to the yield curve is that the shape or slope of the yield curve has a remarkable track record of predicting recessions. What you see in this chart is the difference between the 10-year and 2-year treasury rates. When people talk about the slope of the yield curve, they are usually referring to the spread between the 10-year and 2-year rates. When the 10-year rate is significantly above the 2-year rate, the spread is large. There are periods when the spread between the 10-year and 2-year rates is negative. This means that the 2-year interest rate is actually above the 10-year rate. If the spread is negative, it indicates that people are not expecting strong economic growth in the future, or they expect inflation to be low for an extended period. If you look at the graph, the shaded areas indicate recessions. As you can see, before every recession, the spread between the 10-year and 2-year rates went to zero or even negative. Because of this impressive track record in predicting recessions, the slope of the yield curve is closely watched as a potential signal for an upcoming recession.
The slope of the yield curve is crucial for banks because they usually borrow money for short periods and lend it out for longer terms. The spread between the 10-year and 2-year rates is a key indicator of the profitability of lending activities by commercial banks. Anytime the spread between the 10-year and 2-year rates is small, close to zero or negative, it indicates that banks are not going to make much profit through their commercial banking activities. For example, if the spread between the 10-year and 2-year rates is zero, it means that when banks borrow money, the interest they pay on that borrowed money is almost equal to the interest they charge their customers. So their margin, which is the difference between the two, is zero or close to zero, which is bad for the bank's profitability.